Jesus, Jesus, Lord to me, Master, Savior, Prince of Peace, Church family and friends, thank you for the joy once again of coming to your home on this Wednesday evening. Our Bible study for this Wednesday is a message that I want to share with you that not only do we need it tonight, Wednesday, but we need it seven days a week, 24 hours of the day. And you know what that is? Divine direction. I want to ask you pastorally, do you need direction this evening? Maybe in your home, maybe with your children, your spouse, maybe with your parents, maybe with upcoming school and decisions that you need to make. We all need direction in our life, don't we? And especially during these days, we need more direction than we've ever needed before. This evening, I come from one of my favorite Old Testament books of the Bible, and it's from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 30, beginning with verse number 19. Give me just a moment to find that in your home. Isaiah chapter 30, beginning with verse number 19. And I want to encourage you, go ahead and get your ink pen ready, because there's a verse that I want you to specifically underline in your Bible. It's a verse that has been with me for a long time, and I lean on this verse as a husband, a father, and especially as a pastor. Let me read this to you tonight. Are you ready? Isaiah chapter 30, beginning with verse number 19. The Bible says, For the people shall dwell or inhabit in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, the Bible says, he will answer thee. Verse 20, And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers, or that should read or can read, yet shall not the Lord be removed into a corner any more. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers or the Lord. And then here it is, verse 20. Go ahead and begin to underline right now. Listen to this precious, timely verse. The Bible says, And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. And when you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left, the Bible says, you will hear a word. Now, as I come into your home each and every Wednesday, especially tonight, this verse that we read in Isaiah 30, beginning with at 21, verse 21, I need to hear a word from the Lord. I believe you need to hear a word from the Lord. And as we are beginning 
to this coming Sunday to celebrate the birth of, a, of America, the birthday of America. We need to hear a word from the Lord. These are changing times, and we need to hear, Lord, speak to us. Show us, direct us in the way we should go. Well, before we begin our study, I'd like to begin with a word of prayer, and then let's go into God's Word and ask Him to speak to all of our hearts. Let's pray together. Our precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the prophet Isaiah. Father, I thank you for Isaiah 30, verse 21, and what that verse has meant to me personally. And Lord, I pray now that you will help that verse to be a blessing to everyone who is watching. Father, we love you and we thank you. And Lord, help us to be so attentive spiritually to your tender voice. In Christ's name I pray and amen. In preparation for you and for this Wednesday, I remember several years ago reading about a story about Albert Einstein. He was traveling from Princeton on a train going to his next speaking engagement. And the conductor was coming down the aisle punching tickets. And the conductor asked Albert Einstein, may I have your ticket, please? And Albert Einstein reached into his suit coat pocket and it wasn't there. He reached in the other pocket. It, it wasn't there. He reached in his trousers, and it wasn't there. He reached down in his briefcase, and the ticket was not there. The conductor said, Dr. Einstein, I know who you are. Everybody on this train knows who you are. Don't worry about it. It's okay. And the conductor went on and began to talk with the other passengers on the train, and all of a sudden, after a little while, the conductor turned around and saw Dr. Einstein literally on his knees looking around for that misplaced ticket. And the conductor hurriedly came back to Albert Einstein and said, Dr. Einstein, don't worry about the ticket. We know who you are. Don't worry about it. And Dr. Einstein said, young man, you may know who I am. I know who I am, but the problem is I don't know where I'm going. Now, <laughs> have you ever had days like that where you just don't know where you're going? Well, I mean, you know you're going to work or you're going to the store or maybe even you're coming to church, but down deep in your spirit, down deep in your soul, you have that penetrating thought where am I going in life? Where am I going? Well, background to Isaiah chapter 30 depicts a very sad yet tragic day in the history of Israel. The Assyrians were coming to attack Israel, and Israel, instead of conversing with God, they went to Egypt of all people. <laughs> They went to Egypt, of all people, for advice about what to do with the Assyrians. Now, wait a minute. Do you remember Egypt and Israel? Do you remember how Israel was such under a bondage under the cruel hand of Egypt? Now, you know that. And then finally, Pharaoh, oh my goodness, Pharaoh finally let Israel go. Can you imagine Israel going back to Egypt for advice about what to do with their enemy? I don't even want to think about it, but it actually happened. And so you know what God did with Israel? Israel began to see God working on them to bring true repentance that instead of going to Egypt for advice, they should have come to God. And finally, they repented, thank the Lord, and God says, to, the, to Egypt, uh, to Israel, excuse me, to Israel about the Assyrians. I'll show you what to do. I'll give you a direction, but my direction will be in my voice. Tonight, I want to talk to you about four biblical disciplines 
And I use that word lovingly. It's going to be a discipline on all our parts to understand God's direction in your life. And here's the very first one. If I want direction in my life right now, this day, on Wednesday evening, I must be still with patience. <laughs> Are you a patient person? Here's a helpful hint. Write it down. Put it on the refrigerator. Here it is. Never, ever, under no circumstance, ever get ahead of God. Don't do it. I beg of you, don't do it. If you do, you're inviting serious trouble in your life. Romans 12, 2. Excuse me, Romans 12, 12. The Bible says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. I have a thought of the day I want to share with you, and it's on the screen. I found it the other day, and it just reverberated in my spirit. And here it is. Here's a thought for the day. God has perfect timing. Never early, never late. It takes a little patience and a whole lot of faith, but it's worth the wait. Now, here's a discipline, and I use that word lovingly, and I'm speaking to myself. We must be still with patience. Don't ever get ahead of God. Don't do it. You say, Lord, I'm, I need to hear your voice, and I'll be still to hear your voice. Second discipline is this. Be sensitive with perception. And what I mean by that word perception is knowledge, observation. Now, what is perception? Perception is the ability to see or to hear or become aware of something through your senses. Okay? <laughs> uh, every day just about when I'm in this study, this pastoral study that's so beautiful, about 10 till 9 or 9 o'clock, I'll be writing or I'll be studying, and all of a sudden, there's a train track <laughs> that, it, that is here on Bemis Lane, and that train comes almost by clock, either 10 till 9 or 9 o'clock. Now, my senses tell me a train is coming. It also tells me it's around 9 o'clock. You know what? There's a, another perception that we need to have, and that's a spiritual perception or a spiritual discernment. Now, what is spiritual perception? It's the supernatural awareness from God's holy word that sheds light on our journey of life. That's right. You see, we all need God's holy light to help us in our spiritual perception. I read a story by Bo Thompson that I, I didn't know. It's a beautiful story about the early days of coal miners in the coal mines. Did you know back in the early days of the coal mines, they did not feature the ventilation systems that they have today. The miners would bring in caged canaries. Can you imagine that? Caged canaries into the coal mines. Why? Because the canaries were especially sensitive to carbon monoxide. The canaries were ideal for detecting any dangerous gas buildups, and this, the canaries would sing, and oh, they just made a beautiful noise in the coal mines, but the coal miners had a perception, and here it was. When the canaries stopped singing, guess what? Those canaries were perceptive of carbon monoxide being built up in the coal mines. I love that story. I so want to be perceptive of my environment so I can be very cautious and careful of how God would speak to me. The third discipline is this. Not only be still with, with patience, not only be sensitive with perception, but thirdly, listen very carefully, be scriptural with praise. There it is on the screen. Be scriptural with praise. I don't know where I heard this, but somehow it lays on the mantle of my heart, and here it is. When the praise goes up, the power comes down. I'll say it again. When the praise goes up, the praise 
excuse me, let me say it again. When the praise goes up, the power comes down. I'm going to give you some verses to write in the margin of your Bible. Psalm 156, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Psalm 34, 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Psalm 118, verse 28, Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. Now, when we praise God, three things will happen. One, we will recognize his ultimate power. Two, we will remember his ultimate promises all throughout Scripture. And three, we will reflect on his ultimate provisions. Agent Rogers said this, God has not promised smooth sailing, but he has promised a smooth landing. You know what, friends? If I want to have God's direction in my life, I want to go ahead in advance and begin to praise him that he will speak to me and I will hear him and I will obey him. And I want to encourage you, that's a discipline that does not come natural. That is a discipline that is supernatural. It's not natural that we, that we praise God, but supernatural it is. Why? Because I know if I go to God in prayer and ask him to direct my life, listen, friend, he will, he more than he will, he'll do it as we ask. Now, here's the last biblical discipline. To understand, God, to understand God's direction in your life. Let me, get, let me go over them again. Be still with patience. Two, be sensitive with perception. Three, be scriptural with praise. And here's the last one. Be strong. Be strong, be strong, be strong with perseverance. You might be saying faster. It's been a week. It's been a month. It's been a quarter. It may have been a year, and I still have not heard from God. Friend, let me read a quote to you from Oswald Chambers. Many of you are familiar with him. Oswald Chambers said this, There is a call to spiritual perseverance, a call not to hang on and do nothing, but to work deliberately, knowing with certainty that God will never be defeated. Friend, read that over and over and over again. I wish I could mail that to you. I wish I could hand that out to you. I wish I could say that to you every day. Don't give up on God. Say that with me in your home. Don't give up on God. Don't. Friends, listen. God's going to speak. God's going to speak just because God is not giving you a word. It, God is not saying, you know, I am, I'm going to turn a deaf ear to you. Oh, friend, no, no, no. God hears your voice. God knows you need direction. Be patient with him. He'll guide you and he'll lead you. And remember this, with God, he will direct your life. Do you love the precious hymns? I think we all certainly do. This Wednesday evening, I just want you to get still for a moment. And I want you to listen to a classic hymn that we all love. It's entitled, He Leadeth Me. May this be a blessing to your spirit tonight.
this gloom sometimes where Eden's bowers bloom by water still or troubled sea still tears his hand that leadeth me he leadeth me Thank you for the privilege again of coming into your home and sharing the glorious gospel of God's holy word. I enjoy the preparation time, the study time, and I do hope and pray that you know tonight that God will direct you, friend. I know he will. I know he can. And I'm going to go ahead in, in advance and rejoice with you tonight that before you go to bed, you're going to hear God speak a voice to you. And as always, I love to say this because I don't know what you've been through today. I don't know what's happening to you today, but I want to give you a timeless truth from the Holy Scripture. And here it is. <laughs> Jesus, the Savior, the Lord, our best friend, loves you. God bless you and thank you.